All right, everyone. Thank you for your patience as we ironed out our technical difficulties. Uh, and please excuse any hiccups that we have tonight. This is the second one that we've done, really the third one today, because we had a dress rehearsal earlier. But this is the first time that any of us have ever tried to do this freshman orientation on a virtual platform. Usually we do this face to face at pause and we have all of you come to meet us in person. But unfortunately, the way of the world right now, uh, it's safer for everybody to stay home and we will meet each other on this virtual platform. Uh, my name is Dr. Moore and I would like to extend to all of you the warmest welcome. Uh, especially to the students and parents of the class of 2024. Uh, we thank you so much for choosing cause for your high school education. And I can say with absolute certainty that you have made the best choice. Columbus Alternative High School is the best school in Columbus. You have a wonderful program, you have wonderful teachers, and we think that you will enjoy your four years here with us. I want you to realize though, Cause is challenging. It is a challenging school. Even if you were a straight A student in middle school and elementary school, you are going to find yourself working hard at cause. You are going to have to do your homework every night. You are going to have to study during your free time, both at school and at home. You are going to have to make sacrifices to your social life. But if you do these things, you will be successful. We have wonderful teachers, like I said, the best staff in Columbus. And if you listen to them, take their advice, do the tasks that they have set out for you, you will find that four years from now when you graduate, you'll be prepared for the college of your choice or to enter the workforce and the career of your choice. Uh, we firmly believe in what we're doing here at CAUSE and we hope that you will too. Uh, so this is a big step. This is your freshman orientation. This is an opportunity for you to learn more about the courses that you will be selecting and hopefully you will all set yourselves up for advanced studies that we offer at cause with the international baccalaureate program and the advanced placement program. So these are things that you have in front of you, but the first step is to make sure that you schedule yourself into the courses correctly that we have to offer you as freshmen. And that's part of what this presentation is about. And hopefully you've watched our scheduling video too. Um, best wishes to all of you as we start this journey together. And here, moving forward, we will get into the presentation. Um, some people that you should know, Mr. Sanders is our head principal. Unfortunately, he cannot be here tonight because he is at a graduation planning meeting for the district for the class of 2020. So he sends his warmest wishes and regards to all of you. Again, my name is Dr. Moore. I am your grade level administrator and we will be together for the next four years. Ms. Michelle Lewis is our other grade level administrator at cause. We have a wonderful counseling team of Ms. Goodwin, Ms. Higgins and Dr. Milligan. We'll all be working to help you with this scheduling process. And then we have Ms. Webb, who is not only our advanced studies coordinator, but is also our math department chair. Ms. Samantha Smith is our internship and career center coordinator, as well as the producer on these videos to, and this presentation that you see today. Uh, Ms. Jamie Foley is our humanities and English department chair, and she will be working with you to help schedule the humanities courses. And Mr. Adam Johnston is our science department chair and expert in biology and the biological sciences. So thank you for being here this evening. Please um, you know, do your best to watch and participate. And if you have questions, and ask them in the Q&A section and Ms. Smith is going to explain our norms to you. Um, so, the cause norms drive um, really how we interact with each other in our professional learning community as both learners and educators. Um, so we're hoping tonight to introduce you to our cause norms to highlight a few of them. And these will be things that you see um, certainly over the next four years at, at cause. So the first one is be present, explore your excellence, communicate your needs, assume best intentions, have healthy habits, and step forward and step back. So tonight we'd really appreciate it if you were present with us 
Um, we're going to cover a lot of important information that's going to um, bring you into your first year at cause and hopefully serve you well over the next couple of years. And through your scheduling choices, um, and when we start our coursework in the fall, we're hoping that you explore your excellence um, as a learner and as a, as a human being. Um, tonight, we really want you to communicate your needs. And so um, we'll transition over to the right with virtual norms. Um, we are utilizing the Q&A box for general questions. Um, if you have a very individual question, um, we ask that you send an email um, to someone, uh, the appropriate person at the end of this presentation um, so that we can make sure that we're streamlined in this process. So if it's something that you think would benefit the greater good, please feel free to ask that in the Q&A box. Um, we will not be utilizing the chat box um, for this session. And then, you know, as I had addressed before, if you have a very specific question, um, we would appreciate it if you could email the appropriate person and those emails will be available at the end of our um, presentation tonight. So now we're going to go into the course overview of what courses we offer our freshmen at cause. Um, and first to discuss, um, to give an overview of humanities will be Ms. Megan Higgins. Hi guys, I'm Megan Higgins. I'm one of the counselors at cause, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about humanities. I'm going to pass it off to Ms. Foley, one of our humanities teachers here in just a moment. Um, so cause humanities is a, it's a foundational course for the rest of the classes that you'll take at cause. Um, it is a class that's both English and social studies combined with two teachers teaching it. And it's usually a really big class. There's usually a lot of kids in that class, but there are two teachers teaching it. Um, so you do get credit for social studies, a world history credit and an English nine credit when you take that class. Um, the one exception is for some students who may have had English nine um, in eighth grade. They will, when we go to the scheduling part, we'll show you where to indicate, but you will just indicate that you're taking Humanities English 10 and World History or World Studies 9. Um, Ms. Foley is now going to give you some more info about Humanities. Hello, everybody. We're going to, um, I have a slide for you that reiterates uh, some of what Ms. Higgins has already said, right? Um, I do want to stress to you this idea that the Introduction to the Humanities course is a foundational course. Um, we see it as absolutely essential to progress you um, and to grow you as learners so that you can be successful in not only advanced placement coursework, um, it come sophomore through senior year, but also the international baccalaureate coursework that you could take junior and senior year. And indeed, uh, every year I have alumni come back and say to me, you would not believe I'm doing much what we did in ninth grade in their freshman college classes. So we see it as a way to truly elevate um, your reading, writing, and speaking skills um, to an analytical level that could be uh, more than you had been required to do during English language arts and social studies classes in middle school. But that's why you're here, right? Um, as Ms. Higgins indicated, you will get this, you'll get two credits um, for this course, your English credit and your social studies credit, both of which are required for graduation. Um, it'll be listed on your schedule twice because it's on for two credits and um, it'll be listed on your report cards twice. It'll be the same grade because everything's embedded together where we weave the two curriculums together so that they are not separate. So you'll get two grades of the same in what, whatever you're getting. Um, there is a summer reading assignment attached to the course, which is due on the first day of school. And we'll have more details of that coming up next week. And you'll be able to ask questions and such on that for the second session next week for the Q&A. Um, and then I also noted exactly what Ms. Higgins noted there. If you happen to be the ki a kid that took English 9 as an 8th grader, great. You'll sign in for English 10. Oh, the earlier session asked what sort of topics we cover in Intro to the Humanities. And it is an ancient focus of a curriculum. However, we do have some modern um, topics and works in there as well. Glad you're here. 
And I believe now, uh, is it Miss Goodwin that's going to take over? Yeah. Or perhaps Miss Higgins. It's me. Oh, Hi. okay. Sorry, Miss okay. Higgins. <laughs> that's all right. I know we got a little confused. Um, so really quickly, we're going to talk about science um, and what your options are for science. Um, so at cause, you know, just like we were talking about with humanities, we're just a little extra at cause. So you don't start with physical science at cause, you start with biology. So every ninth grader will take biology as their ninth grade science course, unless they're interested in taking biochem, which is two science courses. So now to tell you all about that and all that good detail is Mr. Johnston, our science, one of our science teachers. Hello, everyone. So everybody starts out with biology, which is already accelerated, as she said, because we skip physical science. This allows everybody to get chemistry in by the end of their 10th grade year. This allows every student to then take AP and IB courses their 11th and 12th grade year. So you can take college level coursework. Everything's good. Now we do have kids want to accelerate even more. And so for those students, they can do the biochem, which is taking a year of biology and a year of chemistry all in the same year, your freshman year. So this would then allow you to start taking AP courses uh, your 10th grade year, as well as AP and IB courses your 11th and 12th grade year. So that's if you're an AB math and science student right now, you're a hard worker, you're really into this, and you want to make sure you can take as much science as possible, that would be something you could opt for. But everybody is going to take biology regardless. That's the normal. And if you take biology, it's not like you're missing out on all this stuff. You'll still have two years. You can still take any of the IB coursework, and you'll still be able to choose AP coursework as well if you want to. I think now we transition some Q&A if there was anything that we'd seen. So at this time, if you have any questions about science or our humanities, you can go ahead and type it in the Q&A box addressed to all panelists. Um, and we will take your questions about humanities and science. Please also note that all of the attendees can see the Q&A. So if you have a personal question or concern, it probably is best to wait and send a direct email later. All right, I think that um, as those questions are coming in, you know, we can definitely come back um, and revisit those questions. So we'll go ahead and um, discuss mathematics. Hi, everybody. I'm Mrs. Goodwin. I'm one of the other school counselors. There is one more of us, Dr. Milligan. He wasn't able to join due some, to some technical difficulties, but I know if he was here, he would tell you how excited he is to see you guys next year and for you guys to start your school experience, as am I. So we're going to start talking about your math courses. So regardless of whether you go into our advanced studies or go a more traditional graduation path, you are going to have four courses of math regardless. And math in Columbus City is changing a little bit. So you're going to see a little bit of a transition of what your high school math courses are going to be. And to explain that a little bit more, we're going to introduce Ms. Webb. Hi everyone, I'm glad that you're here. My name is Ms. Webb and I am the math department chair and I teach math. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what your options are for scheduling math courses. Columbus City Schools in the past seven or eight years has been utilizing the integrated curriculum for Common Core. And this year we're actually transitioning back to the traditional pathway. So that means we are moving from math one, two and three over to Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. Um, we're going to keep Math 2 around for an additional year to allow for the transition to occur. But you can kind of see on the slide here that um, I have a little bit of instructions for what you were taking last year and what you should enroll in this following year. So there was a question last time about how do I know what credit I'm what credit I'm earning, what class I'm taking. So if you don't know, you should look at your report card transcripts or ask your current school counselor or administrator so you know what current class you're in. But if you are in math eight or eighth grade math or some uh, parallel to that, 
you're going to enroll in Algebra 1 when you get into cost. So that's what you should select on the scheduling sheet. If you're currently in Math 1, you're going to actually finish off Math 2 to kind of finish that integrated little pathway there. And if you're in Math 2 right now earning a credit, you're going to go into Algebra 2 during your freshman year. And then if you are currently earning a Math 3 credit, we're going to have you enroll in AP Statistics followed by a pre-calculus course your sophomore year. So it's kind of confusing if you have specific math questions, feel free to send me an email. We'll share my email later on but, or general math questions I can answer in a little bit. We also want to note that this spring is odd because of the COVID and the closures. And if you are currently already kind of accelerated in math, taking a math two or a math three, and you feel uncomfortable progressing to the next level, we are able to re-enroll you in a course your freshman year if you want to get your footing um, by going through the, the content again. And for us, advanced coursework is the IB classes that we offer and AP classes that we offer in math. And in order to be eligible to take those classes, you need to either have a math three or an algebra two credit to be able to enter into those classes. So that's math. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about world languages next. Um, at COS, we offer three different world languages. We have Spanish, French, and Latin. Um, if you haven't had a world language yet in middle school, that is absolutely okay. No worries. You get to choose what class you get to begin with at COS. Um, if you've already started a language and in middle school, then it's great. You can go ahead and progress to the next class. So if you were in French 1, you can go ahead and progress to French 2. Um, and if you have specific questions about that, if you're a heard, if you're a native speaker of a certain language and you want to check with us first and kind of see how that works, just send us an email. That's not a big deal. We can handle that. Um, at cause, if you, uh, we try to encourage everybody to work towards the diploma of distinction. And within that, you have to have three years of the same world language. That's also a requisite, um, a prerequisite for the IB diploma. So we do have in each of our languages a two, three split that is available for students to take sophomore year. So everybody can get to that point of having three years of a world language um, by the time that they are a junior, if they would like to do so. Um, most colleges don't expect you to have that much, but like we said before, it causes a little extra. We expect you to do a little bit more and to have lots of good experience with that. So that is what our world languages program is all about. So next, I think we're going to talk about electives with Ms. Goodwin. Slide, you're about to see a ton of classes. It looks overwhelming, but you don't have to do all of these. So these are just options for additional classes. There are some requirements within this you'll need in order to graduate a fine arts credit, a tech credit, um, two PE, courses that'll add up to half of a credit and then a health credit. And so you'll have options throughout your four years to take those and really explore some fun things. COS has a ton of arts classes. So if you're interested in visual arts, performing, singing, playing an instrument, this is the place for you. And so some things I want to highlight, if you look under the performing arts, column, the very last course musical theater is a brand new course for this year. So that is very exciting. Um, also, some of the things we'll talk about on the scheduling sheet, like jazz band and mixed ensemble are audition required. So you can put them on your scheduling form, but it's going to have a little bit more of a process to it. Um, if you look on the second column, you're going to see computer graphics and you'll also see that on the third column. The reason for that computer graphics is a little bit unique because it counts for both your fine art credit and your tech credit. So that's the only class that does that. And then the other electives are just things that don't fall into one of those other two categories. So every student will take health PE1 and PE2. Unless you are in a sport or marching band and can get a PE waiver, but we will explain more about PE waivers once you get your freshman year. I think we are transitioning to another Q&A. So if you guys have any questions about math, about world languages, or about electives, you can pop those into our Q&A and we'll answer them. 
Question is, do you have to take PE? So yes, the only exception for taking PE, like I mentioned before, is if you have played two years of the same sport and can get a PE waiver. Um, or that also counts for marching band. So you would play that through your home school. We don't offer sports at cause, but after you played two seasons of that sport, you can fill out a waiver and both of those are covered. Just for a point of clarification with the computer graphics, um, the reason it's in both categories is that it can count as either a tech credit or a fine arts credit. And so if students are pursuing maybe the performing arts um, path and then they opt in to take computer graphics, that's when it can count as that technology course or vice versa if they were really heavy on the tech um, and they needed a fine art credit, that's when it can kind of flip over to be the computer um, to the, be the fine arts credit. Would taking marching band also count as a PE credit? Yes, you just have to have two seasons and then you fill out the waiver. Can you repeat the requirements for electives again? Yes, so there's a general elective requirement that you'll most likely meet by hitting the other requirements in your language requirements. Um, but you will need one credit of fine arts. So that's any of the performing arts or visual arts. Um, one credit of tech. So that's computer graphics, information technology, you see in the other electives, web publishing, Excel, those would need to be taken together to count as one health credit. So you take one semester of web publishing and then one semester of Excel. Um, you need your PE credit. So that's either the two, the PE one and the PE two or the waiver, and then your health credit. Does the PE waiver count if it is a sport outside of Columbus City Schools official activity, club or travel or something like that? I can help with that one. Um, it does need to be a CCS school. Um, we've not had any luck with anybody playing a sport outside of the district where that's counted for the PE waiver. One thing I just wanted to mention regarding electives, uh, and that is that it is very important to try to schedule your phys ed classes, your health class, your tech credit early on, either your freshman or your sophomore year. If you are planning on going into the IB diploma program, um, it happens to be that students that take the IB diploma program work wind up having very full schedule. It is very difficult then to schedule in the, the health and the phys ed and the tech credits. Often those credits can then be uh, done on DCAP, which is our virtual platform through the district. Uh, but we always like to have people take them in person if they can. Now with the fine arts credit, we saw we offer quite a few fine arts electives, so it's a little easier to get those classes in later. But if you uh, if you need the PE health credits, it is a really good idea to try to schedule them early freshman and sophomore years. Thanks. There's a question about PE and health in the summer. And just wanted to say we could talk about VCAP for just a second. I know that the summer school form has not been released yet, but Ms. Higgins, do you want to touch on that? Sure, you're absolutely right. Um, I know that they were just having kind of conversations about summer school last week um, that they had to make some adjustments because everything is online over the summer. 
Um, they are also supposedly reducing some of the options they have available for classes for summer school. Um, but we don't have a full listing yet, and we're hoping in the next two weeks that that comes out so that we have the registration available and the listing of what's going to be available on BCAP for students to take over summer. But um, from what we've been told, um, Ms. Goodwin and I can speak to that, I guess, but um, PE and health, is they're both supposed to be offered this summer, so more to come on that. Okay, I think at this time we'll just go ahead and take a look at what the freshman course selection form looks like online. So everyone will be provided this link um, at the end of the presentation. It'll be on the screen and we'll type it in the Q&A box as well. Um, so we're just gonna kind of walk through a mock-up of what a, um, what a schedule might look like, a schedule request might look like for a freshman. Okay, so the first option that you guys will get to choose from is your humanities option. For most people, it will be the first option, the freshman humanities English 9 and humanities world studies 9. The um, second option is just for those students who did get an English 9 credit in middle school. So those are your two options. So if you had English 9 in middle school, you are able to choose that second choice. But for most of you, it will be the first choice, the humanities English 9 and world studies 9. Um, for science, um, depending on what you decide for science, um, everybody, like we talked about before, will be taking biology unless you choose to take the pre-AP IB biochem class. Um, with that, you know, like Mr. Johnson said, we want to see that you had good grades in math. Um, we'd love to have you have a math one credit completed because that's very helpful for that. Um, and that does, just another thing to kind of think about with that class, it does eat up a big chunk of your schedule. That's, you know, two classes. So that's two science courses. So if you have a lot of other electives you're interested in, um, that could limit some of the possibilities for that. So that's something, if you want more information, make sure to let us know. I think Ms. Goodwin's gonna talk about math. Yes, so going on to math, um, you can see under each section, there's the prerequisites. If you're coming in just from math eight, you're going to take algebra one, and then you can see math two, algebra two, or AP stats, depending on what you took your eighth grade year. Okay, and then next we have world languages. That's pretty self-explanatory, like we talked about before. If you have already had a world language class and wanna continue with that, go ahead and choose the next class in that sequence. Um, if you have not had a world language before, you get to choose. So that's pretty exciting. You get to choose what world language you would like to have. Um, and I think that's all for that one. So I think next we're going to talk about electives. Yes. So on the elective offerings, you can choose four. And you choose them, I believe, in ranking of what you'd like. There's no guarantee that we can put you in every single one that you would like. But it gives us an idea of your preferences, things you're interested in. Um, as you can see, it's highlighted jazz band and mix ensemble are audition only. And so that's going to have more of a process to it. You don't just get in because you clicked on jazz band. Um, but we're going to do our best to fit you into something that you're interested in or seems like one of your top choices. You won't have four electives in your schedule. Obviously, you've got your core courses. They're going to take up a little bit. So these are just kind of a way for us to gauge your preferences. And so you'll put in your four choices. And then you would just hit the date, make sure you submit the form. And that's how you fill out your scheduling form. So now we are going to move on to advanced studies and talking a little bit more about our AP and IB programs. And so I will pass that off to Ms. Webb. Hi again, I am the advanced studies coordinator, which means that I operate the AP and IB programs here at CAUSE. So I wanna go through them a little bit just to give you an idea of what's coming down the road and help you to try to prepare for that mentally. So. Our AP is the Advanced Placement Program, which most people are familiar with. And these are classes that are available from 10th grade through 12th grade. And we have a lot of them you can see in the sciences, some in math and, and in social studies. And these offer students places that they can kind of 
pick and choose what they're interested in and really hone in on those subject areas. Some of them we recommend to take earlier on and some of them we recommend to save for after you've had more experience, but we can get into that once you know a little bit more. And then on the right hand side, IB stands for International Baccalaureate, and that is an internationally recognized program, whereas AP is mostly based in the United States. And you can see we have a plethora of offerings in the IB program. We are the only school in Columbus City Schools to offer the IB program. And we have a lot of pride around that because we believe it's a program that really enriches a student from all angles. We create well-rounded learners and people that are really curious about the world and understanding it. And um, these courses are reserved just for 11th and 12th grade, and they all have certain prerequisites that you need to, to meet. And so I'm going to be making a separate video to have a lot more in-depth information about what is IB, what prerequisites do I need to think about that you can view separately. I just want to note that um, for IB, you can take it just like AP classes where you pick and choose a couple of classes that interest you, or you can submerge yourself in the full IB experience, which would be the full IB diploma, which is a diploma that you earn on top of your actual high school diploma. So it kind of sets you apart from the pack a little bit in terms of college applications and things like that. We think that at cause every student should engage with college level coursework because every student is capable. And so all of our juniors and seniors are actually taking IB English. That is kind of our base English course for those years. And so no matter what your pathway is at cause, we want you to know you belong in these programs and you will interact with this college level work at some point. And so um, just kind of be thinking about what that might look like for you. Top right corner, you'll see the tiny URL up there. The S is supposed to be on the end of the studies. The program of studies is where we list descriptions of all of our courses if you want to know a little bit about what content they carry and you know when they're offered and their prerequisites. There's some more information there. Thanks. Um, the cause internship is a unique program um, to cause that allows our juniors and seniors the opportunity to go out every Wednesday from late October through mid May to engage in experiential learning at an internship site of their choosing. So each year we have approximately 350 students going out to 200 unique sites around central Ohio, exploring what, what might come next, um, building professional and personal skills that will serve them well um, during their time at cause, but also after they leave and go on to do great things in college and career. Um, so we want to take this opportunity as when you're a freshman and sophomore to get to know you better, to see what your strengths are, to identify areas for growth um, so that we can, we can get you into that right fit for your internship junior and senior year. So these photos are just um, showing some of the unique ways that our students have chosen to pursue internships, um, whether it's out doing, um, you know, field work at Spruce Run Environmental Center and planting trees. Um, and providing science education to CCS students. Um, in the middle, we have a, a student led group called She Can Make a Difference that does um, empowering messaging for our fifth and sixth grade students around the district. Um, and then we have a young man there on the right who was at a bike shop where he went through training to um, be a full bike mechanic and was later employed by the um, agency that had uh, hosted him as an intern. It's a great opportunity. Each year, our students earn. Um, anywhere from 120 upwards of 200 hours at their internship site, um, well exceeding the CCS requirement for internship, um, but certainly more importantly, growing as individuals and as part of their communities. It's something, it's a program we're really proud to have. We're the only, uh, the only school in the district that offers a two year program, um, and we're one of a few schools nationwide that offers a program like this. So we're going to take another Q&A break to maybe address some of those questions that had come up um, during that last bit of our presentation. We recognize that I think there's a lot of confusion right now with um, families who might be coming from out of district, whether that was 
um, a charter school or a different middle school or somewhere else outside of CCS, um, we know that your student IDs are likely not working for Google Classroom and we plan on posting information um, on our website so that you can access it as well and sending it out through email. Um, there is kind of a lag time sometimes with our, our um, data center putting all that information in for you to have access um, to our Google Classroom, but we will make sure that you have all the materials you need to be successful now and going up until um, the, the term begins. There's a question that wasn't addressed. How many credits do we need for freshman year? I can answer that. So typically we like to think of those core courses that you'll be taking. So that would be your math, science, English, social studies, and then a world language. So that's five. Those are the core courses. And then of course, we'd love to have an elective added on there too. So that's typically six classes. Um, the other thing that I know we talked about, I talked about with somebody after our first meeting was there was some question about um, study hall or academic assist. Um, typically what we do is that we fill the schedules with the requests that students have had. And then as we get closer to the beginning of the school year, we go through and we add um, academic assist in for students. Um, we try to give one to everybody. Um, that would be a two mod academic assist, which is about 42 minutes. But um, if somebody wants to fill that with, um, if somebody wants to fill that with another elective, we can always do that too. So typically about six classes. Um, to go back to a question a student, a family had about playing sports at a home high school. One of the great things um, about cause is that students are um, coming in from all over the city. And so at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day and the end of day, we have dozens of buses waiting for you in the parking lot. Um, they, they do have drop offs at the high schools um, in your neighborhood for sports. It might take you a little bit longer to get there. Um, so, if you're someone who plays uh, volleyball for independence, you might not be there initially when your practice gets started, but you'll just need to have conversations with your coaches to let them know that you're coming from cause and that you'll need time to have, be on the bus to, you know, get your practice clothes on or your game gear on. Um, but you will have transportation back to your home high school. If that's only um, necessary for like one season, um, you can, we can work with the secretarial staff. They're, they're excellent. They know all the bus routes. They can help you get to your home high school for just your season and then take you to your nearest bus stop in your neighborhood um, for the remainder of the year. Um, one question is about internship. So, there are, are um, a couple of things that make cause a little this a little confusing, but Columbus City Schools has a, a requirement of 120 hours of internship to graduate. Um, cause um, goes above and beyond that with our 120 hours each year. So by the time students are at the end of their junior year, they'll typically have met the CCS graduation requirement for internship. Um, and then they continue on with the senior year internship to dig deeper into those experiences that are really going to set them apart from other um, students in the in the area and, and frankly across the nation. Ms. Smith. There's one final question about internship. It, it says, does volunteering count for the internship hours? Yes, so volunteering does count. Um, some of our students will do their internships at nonprofits um, and actually all of our Wednesday internships are unpaid. So technically you are volunteering your time, whether you're in a research lab or if you're helping out at a food pantry. Um, I wanna encourage all students, freshmen through seniors, to go beyond just the Wednesday requirements. I think it's a great way to figure out who you are, who you are in your community, um, and to build some really key relationships that will serve you well going forward. So we've had, um, actually, with our class of 2023, um, we had several students who the summer prior to their freshman year, they earned upwards of 100 hours of volunteer experience which was great because it just kind of gives them that edge when they're thinking about what they want to do for junior year internship. 
and any internship or community service hours that you earn the day after um, the last day of CCS school. So we could say June 1, um, you are eligible to start earning those hours towards your high school requirement. And we had a question last uh, session that I think is a good one to address is, um, it was about what if you feel like you need support, what should you do as a student at cause? And I think that we should take a moment to, to talk about that. Um, we at cause have a wonderfully responsive staff and we genuinely feel like it is our job to support you in your learning and in your growth. And you, if you talk to any of the upperclassmen, the seniors that we are graduating this year, they will tell you that their number one piece of advice is not to wait to have the conversation with your teacher. Um, if you feel behind or if you feel like you have a question or if you feel like you need to clarify something, the longer that you wait, tends to be the more torture you put yourself through and we're here to see you grow and to see you learn so if we can instill any advice to you is to have the conversation when it feels uncomfortable because usually a burden is lifted and you find more clarity after that conversation is over so we're here to support you all of us counselors administrators teachers so we want you to to feel comfortable making those first moves to have a conversation. And that's what we're here for. Ms. Higgins said something last session that I thought was really important is that many times all of you probably did really quite well in middle school. So you, you're coming from this place where you feel really successful and you feel like you have a handle on school. But the reality is that high school is different. And oftentimes, especially ninth graders will look around and say, well, everybody else has it and I don't. And then that means there's something wrong with me, right? Or that I don't belong. And the reality is everybody's feeling that way. So we really just encourage you to reach out. If you need a hand, if you need some clarity, those are our smartest students. Those are our most successful students. The ones who advocate for themselves, who understand when they need the help and are willing to accept it rather than quietly suffer uh, and pretend like they have it. We've all been there and we wanna see you succeed. There's a question about what mods are and without getting into too much detail, basically, if you think about a period, we just break it into half. So, a mod is basically half of a period. So we try to make it a little bit more customizable to cause because we offer so many unique programs. And so that's what a mod is. One thing I'd like to chime in and just say real quick that I think everybody needs to know is that the district is going to a new format next year where the courses are semesterized. And what I mean by that, you still are in a course for the entire year and you earn on credit for the full year of that course, but it is now split in half where each semester counts as half a credit. So along the lines of making sure that you ask for help when you need it, it is really imperative that you don't wait till you're too far behind because that could cost you half a credit for the course and then you would have to make that up in the VCAP virtual credit program. Now, our teachers, uh, as, as hopefully you're seeing from this, this uh, orientation, our teachers are wonderfully kind and warm and caring. And they want you to reach out to them if you're struggling. So please make sure that you are brave enough and have the courage to go up to a teacher and say, hey, you know, I didn't quite understand that. Is there a time when I can get some help? And they will help you at lunch. They will help you oftentimes during their, their conference periods. Um, but that is really important, especially this year, because the time frame has changed and you can't really afford to fail um, a semester and then try to catch up next year. So just something to think about moving forward. Thanks, everybody.
So here we have um, some contact information for our um, Dr. Moore, the grade level administrator, as well as the counselors that will be supporting class of 2024. If you have any um, individual questions, you can definitely direct your emails to these individuals. Um, they will be happy to help you um, make choices that are best for you um, as a student. So I'll go ahead and leave this up on the screen. We will also make this presentation available um, afterwards um, in a few days on both our website and the Google Classroom, um, as well as our video for scheduling, which goes into more detailed information if you wanted to go check that out as well. Um, and the link to uh, complete your scheduling is on the screen right now, and we'll go ahead and type that in the Q&A box for you. Um, this is where you're going to make your course selection. And once you hit submit, the counselors and administration will get your um, request and they'll go through and um, schedule you into the uh, appropriate courses. So we'll leave this up here for a second. Thank you, Ms. Smith. And that brings us to the end of the presentation, there are some social media links up as well so that you can connect with the various um, various platforms to talk to people and to get in contact with teachers and et cetera. Uh, we will leave this meeting up for a few minutes here at the end, give you all a chance to ask a few more questions in the Q&A session, and our team will stay here to answer them for a little bit for you. Again, we thank you so much for being here tonight, uh, and we look forward to working with you, hopefully face to face at some point. But you know, it is possible that the start of the school year may have some virtual aspects as well. Along those lines, keep an eye open for information regarding our freshman summer experience. Uh, the last few years, we've had a summer academy where students come into the building and learn things about the International Baccalaureate Program and skills that will help them carry them through their freshman year. Um, that, if that happens this year, it may happen in a virtual setting. So uh, keep an eye on the Google Classroom and on our website for that information when we are ready to put that out there. Uh, but again, thank you all for being here. We are excited to have you as part of the cause family and stay safe, stay inside, and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you so much. Feel free to ask questions. We'll stick around for a little bit. So I just sent a response, but somebody had a question about which elective courses are full year versus which are semester. So health would be one semester. Each PE course, so PE1 would be one semester, PE2 would be one semester, and then web publishing and Excel are each one semester. Um, everything else is a full year course.
So to answer the question regarding 8th grade arts um, and any 8th grade credit, um, such as um, Jim, as long as the teacher is able to issue high school credit, um, then you are able to be awarded a high school credit for that. So it just depends on if those teachers were certified to issue credit. Correct, Ms. Higgins? Okay. And then there's another one um, that was asked about having prior knowledge of band or music in order to join. I don't know if I, I think with those ones that are definitely audition, um, that would require you to have prior experience with those. Um, but I think other than that, it might be open. Does anyone want to correct me? I think you're right, Ms. Smith. Um, I think with concert band and with orchestra, I think Mr. Richardson is pretty open to anybody who'd like to join for that, with the exception of jazz band. The question was asked about study hall. Um, the, the schedule is set up so that you will have three mods of a humanities um, combined with one mod of a study hall so that you can receive additional support in that course, or you can use that time to work on any other um, coursework that you might have. Um, Ms. Higgins, can you, or do they typically have more than just that one mod of study hall? Um, it really just depends on the schedule. It depends on what other classes students have elected. Um, some people have a really full schedule. Um, others have, you know, especially with some of the fine arts classes like um, orchestra and concert band and jazz band and things like that, or mixed ensemble, if they try out for that, those do eat up some of the elective time. Um, at most, though, we typically wouldn't have anybody in more than three mods of study hall. That's usually what we try to max out at. Um, but we do like to try to give everybody some um, academic assist slash study hall um, during the day if possible, because it's really helpful to be able to get a little extra support during that time. Question here for probably Dr. Moore. When is the latest that we can make changes to our scheduling form? Uh, I would say that you probably need to have that done by early next week. Um, we do have the follow up session information on the summer work uh, and things like that coming up next Tuesday. So, really, um, by the end of that session, I would think. You need to have a good idea of what you want to take and make sure you get that form submitted.
So the last question is about um, scheduling. I'm assuming your hard schedules. Will they be sent by email or mail? Um, past practice, what this year looks like, Dr. Moore. Um, schedules will eventually be live on an infinite campus. Uh, the district always has a time when they make that available to both parents and students. Um, if you have individual questions about what your schedule might look like, certainly feel free to email us. Uh, but typically, the schedules do not go live until sometime mid-summer. Um, so that's that's the time frame to really for that and if you have a parent here that has access to the parent portal that's a, that's a good way to go about that as well. and then i think the last question we'll end on this one is do we offer sports um we do not offer sports at cause um we are one of a few high schools that do not do that because we specialize in our academic offerings um, so students who attend cause through the lottery are then able to go back to their home high school their neighborhood school and play sports we encourage you to do that. We understand that that brings you a sense of balance, um, identity as a community, um, but we do not offer sports at cause. We offer a lot of other extracurricular activities that you can get involved with clubs, um, our slam poetry team, our in the know team, but as far as athletics, we are not a school that offers athletic. So with that, um, thank you again for joining us this evening. If you have any follow-up questions, um, please direct those to Dr. Moore and the counseling team, um, and we will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, and be safe. Bye.